step of course is to pull the wheel off the bike. We'll do this by loosening the axle nut and sliding the axle out of the wheel. Then you'll need to wiggle the chain off the sprocket and pull the wheel straight back out of the swing arm. With the wheel off the bike we'll need to release the air out of the tube by pulling the valve stem core out. After that we'll loosen up the rim lock and push it in to relieve the pressure. The most important tool of course is your tire lever or tire iron as some people call it. Basically a lever with a spoon shape on the end of it, so you can grab the B of the tire and pull it over the rim. This particular design I've been using for over 10 years now and I've been really happy with it. The shape of the end works really well. This is plated here to prevent from scratching the rim and the grip is really solid. And you are not going to bend or break one of these. Before wrenching on the tire at all, you'll want to pop the bead. You can do this by flipping the tire lever over so the spoon shape is facing up and then push down so the tire goes into the center of the rim. You'll need to do this on both sides. By the way, I always like to start with the sprocket side down. That way if your tire lever slips, you don't bust your hand on the sprocket and with the rotor facing up, it lessens the chance of it being bent. To start working the tire off the rim, you'll need to insert two tire levers a few inches apart with the spoon facing down. Push each lever in until you feel it hook on the bead of the tire, then work one lever over and then the next. To remove one lever from the tire, ease up on the pressure a little bit and wiggle the lever out. You'll want to take about 2 inch bites out of the tire each time. Any more than that and you'll be struggling. You'll notice about 2 inches away from where you have the tire over the rim, there's going to be a little gap where you can insert the tire lever. Try to hit this gap each time. As you're working the tire over the rim, Continually check to make sure the bead is down on both sides of the rim. This is the absolute key to making this task as easy as possible. Another thing to keep in mind if you're having trouble working the bead over is to push the rim lock all the way in so that way it's not interfering with the tire. If you've got colored rims and you're worried about scratching them, I'd recommend using a set of rim protectors. These snap onto the rim and protect the edge of it as you're pulling the bead of the tire over. As you can see, the rim protector covers the edge of the rim as you're pulling the bead of the tire over. You can still use the tire levers just like normal and once you've got the bead of the tire over the protectors you can reach in and pull the protectors out and slide them down a few inches to continue working your way around the rim. Now that you know how the rim protectors work, we're going to finish taking the rest of the tire off. So just continue working your way around 2 inch bites at a time. With one side of the tire over the rim, we're going to flip the wheel over and follow the same exact process of pulling the V of the tire over the edge of the rim. Once you've got both sides of the tire over the rim, we're going to place the wheel on the ground with the rim lock facing down towards the ground. Then push the wheel down in the tire so that way you have a gap at the top between the rim and the tire. Start by pulling the wheel and the tire away from each other at the top where that gap is until you have the wheel about halfway out of the tire. Then pull straight upwards towards your face and the wheel will come out of the tire. All right, we're halfway there. If you haven't destroyed your hands yet, let's get started putting this new tire on. To start off, I'll put baby powder in the tire and roll it around. This prevents the tire and tube from chafing against each other. After that, I'll insert the tube into the tire and add some pressure. This allows the tube to center itself within the tire. Remove the valve stem core from the tube and then we'll have to lube the tire so we can begin mounting it onto the wheel. For lubricant, I use dish soap and water mixed together in a spray bottle. The first thing we'll want to line up is the valve stem on the tube with the hole on the rim. And make sure you're inserting the wheel rotor side first into the tire. It helps to put a nut on the valve stem of the tube to hold it in place as we're working the bead of the tire onto the rim. So work the bead over as far as you can by hand 
and then we'll get the rest of it with the tire levers. Again, we're going to be working rotor side up so that way the sprocket doesn't endanger your knuckles. Insert your tire lever with the spoon facing down and as you're pulling the bead over, make sure you're not pinching the tube in there. And also, you'll want to be working with the levers towards each other so that way one lever is holding the bead while the other is pulling the bead over the rim. Once you've got the bottom side of the tire onto the rim, we'll have to get the rim lock in place. So put a tire lever on either side of the rim lock, and once you've got the tire pulled over the rim lock, push the rim lock upwards into the tire, and that's all you'll need to do. Before starting on the second side of the tire, make sure your tube is pushed down all the way inside the tire. That way it's not in the way and prone to getting pinched by the tire levers. Another really handy tool to have when putting the tire back on is called a bead buddy. This holds the bead of the tire over the rim and allows you to focus on mounting the rest of the tire. I'll show you how this works. Before we get started, of course we're going to have to lube this side of the tire. To use the bead buddy, insert two tire levers and pull the bead of the tire over the rim. The bottom part of the bead tool goes underneath the edge of the rim and the top part goes over, hooking onto a spoke. I prefer to put the bead buddy a few spokes to the right of the rim lock and then work the tire over the rim in a clockwise fashion. I found it easiest to work in about two inch sections at a time while alternating the tire levers. So as you're pulling the tire over the rim, take out the tire lever that's behind and move it about two inches past the tire lever you just used and follow the same pattern all the way around. Towards the end of it, I would switch to about one inch bites at a time. The most important thing to remember here is to keep the bead of the tire down in the middle of the rim. This will give you the room necessary to pull the rest of the tire over the rim. Also, only insert the tire lever far enough to where it grabs the edge of the rim. If you go any farther than that, you're risking pinching the tube. Just work your way around and take your time. This is where most people pinch their tubes, so exercise some patience here. And just remember, keep the bead of the tire down in the rim. This will help you a lot. One last thing to consider when you're pulling the tire over the rim with the lever, try not to go all the way down with the lever. Just go to the point where the tire is going over the rim. If you're going all the way down, again, you're risking pinching the tube. As you near the end, it's going to be tough to insert and remove the tire levers. So what you want to do is relieve the tension on the lever you're working with in order to insert the next lever. It's kind of hard to explain, but you can see what I'm doing in the video. Having these tools definitely makes the task of changing a tire a lot easier and less frustrating. Personally, I've used these exact products for about 10 years now and I've been really happy with them. And that's the only way I'd be comfortable offering them on my website. So these rim protectors are sold in a pair. The bead buddy is sold by itself and the tire lever is sold individually but you definitely want two of them as you can tell in the video. All of these are available on the website right now, but I only have a limited stock. I'll have the link to each of these down in the description below. Once you've got the tire mounted, reinstall your valve stem core and add air until the bead seats on both sides. Many times you'll hear a pop when the bead seats onto the rim. Then set your pressure. 12 to 14 PSI is recommended for full size bikes. Personally, I go with 13 in the back and 14 in the front. It's a great idea to check your pressure a few hours later to make sure the tube is still holding air. And of course, don't forget to reinstall your rim lock nut and valve stem cap. Now is a good time to wipe down the axle holes on the swing arm. Over time, dirt and grease will build up here and it's hard to get to when you're washing the bike. When reinstalling your wheel, the first thing to line up is your brake rotor and brake pads. Then pop your chain back on and apply some fresh grease to the axle before sliding it through. Before tightening your axle nut, put a rag between the chain and sprockets and turn the wheel backwards. This will bring the wheel all the way forward to the axle blocks and that's where you want it. Then tighten the axle nut to the correct spec. On this particular bike, it's 94 foot pounds. That's all we got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. I always appreciate your feedback and support. I will see you guys later.